Continuing our discussion about the computer, inputs, outputs, um, I once made a video about this, how this turns about. This goes to the, uh, to the fuel pump and about three or four that are controlled to the fuel pump. I, I did a video a couple of weeks ago about it, so refer to that. You'll see it in the Honda. Uh, anyway, just to go over one, uh, one thing about it, make sure one two three four the coil part of it the, this is actually a terminal or connectors over here this is the one that's brought in current flows this way through four it comes out three then current flows one and two this creates a magnetic field electromagnetic field this closes these contacts armature and you get current flowing here to wherever it's connected. Could be connected to a motor, could be connected to a pump, wherever it's connected to, a blower motor, whatever. Anyway, 15 amps, you pay attention to these, to the ratings of the fuses, 15 amps, not too much. Anyway, you notice in the other ones, they were numbered differently. Sometimes they're numbered 87, 30, I believe, and 85, 86. These are numbered different. Sometimes when you look at relays, even if you look for this one and you go to the fuse box and you pull out the fuse, the, not the fuse, the relay, I'm sorry, the relay, you'll be looking for four and one, three and two. But you know what? That relay is not gonna have those numbers. That relay maybe was replaced. When it was replaced, now the numbers will be, like I just said, 85, 86, 87, and 30. You have to match the sides, the correct terminals with the relay that you have already in in the panel. So you can't always go by four, one, three, two, whatever it is. Like I said, it can be different numbers. You have to match them up to make sure. If you're gonna jump something, which again, I don't jump. I put. I made a video how to test the relay in the circuit. That's the only accurate way. When you put a load on this side, and you put a load on this side. I never went for to take out the relay, put 12 volts right on a bench test. That That's nonsense. Do it correctly. Remember I showed you, I put a terminal, a wire here, a wire to the terminal, and I measure. Where do you have to go to measure this to see if the, and one shot to see if this is working? This is what I explain, expressed on the, on the video. If 12 volts is here, 12 volts is here, right? Let's say 12 volts is here. This, let's say this goes to the computer, obviously. It'll give it a ground. So it'll be at zero volts. This will be 12 volts, always. This will be 12 volts. How do I know these two points are 12 volts? It goes to the battery. How do all time means it's always on, okay? Now, look at this over here. This will always measure 12 volts, 12, 12, regardless of this, because it's connected to the battery. Now, when you look at it, the point of attack, I always express it. Where do I put the, the, the meter of the voltmeter? I put it right here, as I always mention. Why do I pick that spot? Because that, in a nutshell, will tell me if the whole thing is working. You remember I took a wire and I put it right here, and I said, okay, this if this is going to the fuel pump, right? If I have 12 volts here, that means this is working. That means this is working. The whole relay is working in one shot. And I demonstrated it to you in the video how to check relays in circuit, if you want to see that video. So, by going over here and measuring 12 volts, I know current is flowing here. This has a magnetic field, and it, it, it activated this part of it, and that's why I have 12 volts here. Now it's connected through the switch to this. So everything here is working in one shot. One, one shot, I know. That means the rest of it going to the fuel pump, that's the problem there might be the wire going to the fuel pump whatever it is but i know all the electronics up to this point is working that's how i go about it the same thing applies where do you go to measure this one over here right here how much should i measure over there 12 volts same thing applies for this one doesn't matter what the relay the purpose where do i go to measure if this is working in one shot right here where do i go to measure if this is working right here 12 volts okay that you should know like the back of your hand. Let's go to the other part of it. Okay. 
this junction connector. I'm not going to follow the lines because there's so many of them. I'm just going to go over the the main things. Okay, like like you have a gauge control module, like you have on the instrument panel to tell the driver all the things that's going on, the light that's going on, the malfunction light indicator over here, right? These are LEDs that they light. This part of it is for the computer data. That has nothing to do with you. That just goes from the computer to tell this what's going on, okay? Whenever you see fast control area network transceiver, means it's a serial line, automatic, okay? That's nothing we really have to be concerned about. Which gear are you in? Right here, these are the LEDs that go on to tell you which one you're in when you move the gear shift, right? So parking, reverse, neutral, drive, two, one, and then the three. So it tells you to put one by lighting this. Everything here is, is in the gauge, okay? Uh, Anti-theft system, it tells you if there's a problem with the anti-theft system, if it's been disabled, It'll tell you, right? It'll display it over there. Going on over here to this to this side over here. Okay. Now, the old-fashioned way was we had a, a TPS sensor. Um, we had a cable, if you remember or familiar. We had a cable when you when you close or when you put pressure, or you, you step on the gas pedal. Put it that way. You're actually activating a throttle body which is the component that lets air in. When air is being drawn in by the action of your foot on the gas pedal, you're allowing air to go in, the computer senses that and allows fuel, fuel to match that ratio to go into the cylinders, into the engine. Okay? So they call it a gas pedal, but actually you th there's a throttle body and a throttle plate that opens. The degrees of the plate is used for the computer to tell how much that is open in the throttle plate. This is the throttle plate standing like this when it's closed. Obviously, when you open it, guess what? You're going like this, like this, like this. You're opening it, right? Therefore, more air is being drawn in now we took away the cable we made it electronic so what else is new right everything is electronics right no cable now a, a, a electrical um wire to it electrical cable to it right that senses by the height of your gas pedal how much you're stepping on that gas pedal okay welcome to 2020 the year 2020 right so by that, then it sends, this sensor sends an output to the computer telling it how much that throttle body was opened by the action of your, of your foot, of the height of pressing down on the, the gas pedal. Okay, so in other words, it is electric. The, that input or that output goes to the input of the computer. So it knows, hey, the throttle body, open this much, that much, whatever. And we have to match it. We have to match that fuel to it. So no more cable, no more mechanical. It's electrical just to make it sign it. Now, we, before getting to this, we, I just made a video about mass airflow sensor. How many wires? One, two, three. Okay. One, you know, has to be a ground. One, you know, has to be the 12 volts okay one has to be the signal and where does the signal wire always go to it goes right back to the computer so all these things that you see again i'm not even going to follow the lines because you know why i'm just going to give you a hint once you see sensors where does it go you should think automatic a sensor joseph reminded me a sensor where does it go back to the computer which computer the VCM computer, the ECM, the PC, the PCM, the one that has to do with air fuel ratio. How do I know that? Because what does this have to do with air? If it has to do with air, then it has to do with performance of the engine. What does this have to do? If it has to do with fuel, it has to do with the PCM, the ECM, not body a body control module communicates to all these modules. Right? Yes but it has to do with accessories. 
window locks, with uh, uh, door locks, and uh, sorry, uh, door locks, uh, uh, lighting, um, uh, restraints, belt restraints, the accessories, okay, um, radios sometimes. So these has to do with engine, engine controlling the engine, okay, to get the stereometric ratio. Not to, I'm not gonna go too deep into, but anyway. Fuel uh, uh, mass airflow sensor going back to the computer. Which one you have to look it up? Which one is a signal wire? Okay, and what I recommended was remember, I, I told you if it's hard to figure out the, the colors, take that spray that I showed you, spray it, and it dries up pretty fast. And you can see the wire is much better. Why struggle to see is it green? Is it another color? Doesn't make sense. Clean these, okay. What I did was I took out the wires, right? That you saw, I took out the terminals, the mass airflow sensor. I'm not going to take out the connector that just measure 12 volts or 5 volts, excuse me, 5 volts, and say, okay, 5 volts is coming to the mass airflow sensor. So what? That doesn't mean anything to me. That just means 5 volts is coming from the battery, through the fuses, where, wherever. Uh, actually, from the, from, the, from the computer. It's coming from the computer to here. Great. How about if there's a problem with this? How about if it loads it down? Right? How about if there's corrosion in it? That's why I put the wire inside the connector. I took the connector. I opened it up. Put the wire inside. I pressed down on it. Because I want to see under a load condition what the voltage is. And somebody asked me about that. So I'm responding to that. So anyway, what is this fuel uh, fuel pressure? This is fuel pressure sensor again. Um, exactly. You know, when you have that... Um, um, for vapors, unburned fuel, yeah, vapors from the fuel tank, right? So, you know, you get that check engine light when the gas cap, problems with the gas cap after you go, you know, tighten it, whatever, right? That's because of this fuel pressure sensor over here. That it senses that vapor is being released and it tells the computer, put on the check engine light. So basically, this is in a nutshell what's going on. I didn't want to go too much into it. The rest are just lines connecting. These are just fuses. These are just, again, the same relays. So I don't want to repeat the same thing that's been done in the videos that I've been doing all along. But please go to my uh, um, channel, Joe Electronic Schematics for Joe, to see much more how to test a battery, a, lo uh, 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 a load, a low test on a battery. I have, to, I have to clear something up because I was asked a question about it. You're not going to put a load battery tester on the battery when it's 10 volts. Right? If you come out there and you can't start, you can't crank the car, and you say, oh, the battery is low. You measure the battery is 10 volts. Let me do a load test. No. First, you have to recharge the battery. 12.3, 12.6. Okay? It is a test to charge the battery to see how much the battery, how much current the battery can deliver to start the car, to start the engine, to st for the starter motor that goes to the flywheel, that goes to the crankshaft, to the engine. Okay? It gives about 100 amps, let's say. So, it is a test to see how much it can deliver. If it's already under, under charged, already 10, 10, 10 volts, it's gonna fail anyway because it's gonna be right in the red zone. You have to get it when it's charged. You can do it. Let's say you cranked and it was hard to crank, but you cranked. You got the you got the car on, right? But you weren't sure if it was the battery, correct? Let the alternator go about 20, 30 minutes. Let it recharge the the the, um, uh, the battery because I know how many people are gonna have a, a charger in their house, right? So let the alternator do it if you can. Once you got it going and say, okay, boy, that was a hard start today, right? I want to make sure it's not the battery, right? First of all, look at the terminals. I made a video about making sure there's no corrosion or rust. Those are high resistance cables on the cables. If you have corrosion or rust or things like that, you cannot make a contact point if there's rust. I, if I put a meter there and there's rust on the terminal, I cannot measure it because... It's, it's like corrosion. It's like it's a high resistance and you lose voltage across it. 
okay that's the first thing second thing and i made a video to show you how to properly measure the terminals they should measure close to zero ohms if they measure more than that you have a problem with corrosion you have a problem with rust or whatever you have i showed you how to clean it so use that br the wire brush to clean it that's simple but once you get that going and you have the 12 volts you measure the post and say okay let me measure the post i have 12 then you put that low tester on that's what it's made for okay to see if it is the battery not when it's 10 volts on the charge no okay i hope that clear things up thanks